biobank is really just a fancy way of saying a giant collection of, of tissue. So researchers have this um, wealth of tissue, of cancer tissue that they can use for their research. Using those veterinary connections, they submit samples to us when they have a tumour. Uh, we catalogue it, we keep all of the details about the animal and their treatments so that other researchers in the veterinary community can come along and request samples for their own projects. It's a long-term resource for um, comparative oncology research in Australia and it's the first one in Australia um, that's been set up. Biobanks are quite well known um, for human cancers. Um, there's quite a large um, one set up in Melbourne. So that collects tumours from patients that are actually in hospital. We can't operate that model because obviously we have vets in rural areas. So what we've done is set up a biobank that instead of being a, a collection centre with all the collect, tumours collected within in-house, Christy set up a kit that actually does that. So we get all the information, all our tumours are collected remotely, all the pieces of tumour we need, and then it's sent to RMIT. It's de-identified, so we might have the dog's breed and maybe it's its name, um, but we don't have the owner's names. People come up with some uninspired pet names, which is kind of sad. There's, lot, there's a surprising amount of Rovers. I didn't think people actually called their dog Rover, but they do. And I think the interesting thing is that it doesn't really matter what the breed of the dog is. From the samples that we've been getting, we have a really wide distribution of breeds that are still getting breast cancer. Dogs live in the same environment as we do. They get tumours that are the same age as humans, if you take into account doggies. And they um, have the same risk factors, weight, all of those things that humans have. Canine mammary tumours are very prevalent in Australia and that they have a poor prognosis for animals and that nobody here is really using them as a, as a research model. So um, I think I decided on my project really to try and find a way of using this model that's really appropriate for human breast cancer that also gives benefits to dogs that suffer from the disease as well. Dog tumours are a good model for human tumours, but if you ask a, a pathologist to look at a section of a dog tumour, then they don't look like human breast cancers. Um, we're trying to investigate how true that link is, um, and at this stage it looks like um, dogs have more advanced disease than humans do. Most of my focus at the moment centres on two genes that we think are important in human breast cancer in it metastasising to different organs. And so we're hoping to use the dog breast cancers to look at these genes and work out exactly what role they play in helping a cancer spread because most women that die from breast cancer die from it um, metastasising to different organs, in particular the bone. I think the, the biobank <coughs> itself is going to grow because the vets that we have got are very committed. So there's 150 of those around Victoria. So they, they really, and they're interested in what the results are. But I think the um, success of what we've done is the fact that we've gone out, spoken to the vets, told them what we're doing, um, and we keep that up. We've got a newsletter, we've got a website. So everything so that we can keep them involved, especially when all these vets are in rural areas, their only way of connection is a personal touch or a telephone call, those sorts of things, so it's really important. So having such an enthusiastic veterinary community is great because it's not just for my project but long term. So we've now got a network of people that, you know, five, ten years down the track are still willing to participate in our research, so the amount of data we can generate that we can help uh, dogs and humans with is amazing. Mm -hmm.